Hello and welcome to Fork in Politics. I'm Calvin Chapman, your host. And today we're going to discuss my views on Emery Waters and what's happened over the last few months. So as with all of my videos, there is this video itself, um, but it's also shown on the website and the website has the full script of what's written for this episode. So if you want to see uh, why I've said something or you want to see citations, because most of other than personal opinion, if I'm stating a fact, there is a um, citation on it and that will be down in the description. But up on the website is where you'll see my detailed analysis. If you still disagree with me, please leave a comment down below. Reach out to me on Twitter. As far as I'm concerned, we're all in the same arena of politics. And I don't think we need to fall out over um, who likes and who does not like certain people. Obviously, it isn't going to come as a surprise to say that I did not and would not have voted for Anne-Marie Waters. This video is, is predominantly aimed at doing two things. One is to explain why I don't think I want her or her politics as they are in UKIP. And number two, why I think she will make a success of her new political party. And the fact that I do genuinely uh, wish her and all of the people that have gone over to for Britain, I do wish them the best of luck because I do think they've got an important message. So this video is predominantly to outline why why I would not have voted for Emery. And I have to say, you know, I'm the Secretary of Greater Manchester. I think virtually every single chairman in Greater Manchester holds the same opinions as me. So I watched it. I don't, you know, I see lots of people say that she's captivating when she talks and, and I don't find that. I find her, um, she, she isn't engaging and she doesn't seem to get angry the way I think she should get angry. But, you know, maybe that's just me. The one thing that really did uh, amuse me, and I'm sorry I'm finding amusement in it, but during the uh, leadership election, one of the refrains almost entirely from everybody that supported her was, you're a centrist, you're a centrist. And they just kept saying it to everybody as though being uh, the centre of politics is a really disgusting, dirty thing. Um, so for... Britain got set up on Twitter and I was absolutely howling when it put out a tweet that said for Britain stands strictly against the far right and race hatred we are a centre ground party supporting individual rights for Brits I'm sorry that the the amount of people that gave people like me abuse calling me a centrist as though you know, it's, a, it's a, one of the worst things you can call somebody when, in fact, the party that they're now supporting is a centrist party. And I'm sorry, I, I've actually seen people that have objected to that tweet saying that they, um, they gladly wear the moniker of far right. But I think the majority of the people I know that have, have gone and gone over to for Britain aren't far right and they're nothing like far right. Um, I think they are all slightly right of politics to me. And I, I, I make no bones about the fact that I'm right of centre, but I am a centrist, definitely. Um, so I do know that there are people that will class themselves as being on the right will be annoyed that that, that tweet went out. <laughs> and linking that, you know, it's one thing that really did uh, annoy me during the leadership and was Anne-Marie forever being called a far-right person. You know, the, the Times did an absolutely disgusting series of articles on her where she was called far-right in every single one of them. The Guardian did an absolutely disgusting 
um, article, it was an opinion piece in which she was called far right and it was all of it, it was uncalled for and unnecessary. She isn't far right, she's nothing like far right. This is the important bit for me, the distinction between uh, say Peter Whittle who has Islam as a fundamental part of his politics I would say Islam makes up 10% of what he says or said during the leadership whereas with Anne Marie it was 90% it was 80% it was so often and so repeated that that's what she would have done to the party and people like me and, and many other people like me just didn't want to be in a party that was that. So why is it important to people like me that we didn't become Britain first? Well, there's two reasons for that. Number one, as I've already mentioned, is we don't want to be all about Islam. Islam's in there, Islam will always be in there because there is a problem with Islam. You know, we've got people murdering 22 people at a pop concert. We've got people slitting people's throats. We've got people driving trucks into big crowds of people. Islam has a problem, a significant problem, but there are other things in the UK to be concerned about. So that, that was the one part. The other part was essentially what I saw time and time again and I, I you know I'm probably going to put uh, a number of them up behind me here people saying there are millions of people out there that want to want a leader like Anne Marie and that just isn't true in their little bubble on on Twitter and Facebook where the only people that they ever talk to are people that talk about Islam then it may sound to them like there are millions out there but they're not and there is an easy way to test that you can look at the success of uh britain britain first and the bmp bmp you know they they got councillors they got two meps and then they died and disappeared but they weren't doing that well in elections um they simply weren't so if you want to look at it, at it in a more modern sphere Look at Britain first. You know, they did a by-election and they came nowhere. And they did the uh, the London Mayor and they came nowhere. And they did the London Assembly and they came nowhere. So I know had Amory Waters turned UKIP into what she wanted it to, as well as having uh, no funders because all of our financial backers were going to walk away as well as having no count well very few councillors um and as far as i know one or two meps um we would have got nowhere in the elections these people that say there are millions of people out there wanting to vote for somebody like that if they are out there, then they've never gone out and voted for uh, Britain First and they've never gone out and voted for the BNP. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the same will happen with For Britain. It will be great as a pressure group. It will be great um, at banging the drum in the issue regarding Islam. But at the polls, it will, it will go nowhere. And UKIP has a hard enough time um, at the polls as it is if we became the anti-islam party as nigel farage said we may as well pack up and go home so i wanted to uh to to give you the figures so again they're they're on the website and so you can go and check them for yourself in 2015 the bmp stood eight candidates and got a grand total across all eight candidates of 1667 votes not the millions or the tens of thousands. Eight candidates, they got 1,600 votes. Liberty GB, which is uh, equivalent to what uh, For Britain will be, put up three candidates and got a total of, for all three of 418 votes. In 2017, BNP put up 10 candidates, 10 and got 4,642 votes, that's 400 votes each. 
not the millions. You know, the, these are the people that are standing up and shouting about Islam. So where are these millions of votes that people talk about? Liberty GB didn't put any up in 2017. In the Batley and Spen by-election in October 2016, Jack Buckby, who managed Anne-Marie uh, Waters' campaign, he got just 220 votes, not the millions of votes that people talk about. In the 2016 London Assembly, Britain first put up 10 candidates, 10 candidates and one mayoral candidate. The 10 received, uh, and I think this is quite good for Britain First, they received a total of 39,000 votes, 30, 39,071 votes over 10 candidates. The mayoral candidate got a total of 31,300. BNP put up 11 candidates and got a total of 15,833 votes. Mayoral candidate got 13,325 votes. In Rochester and Strew by-election in 2014, so outside of London, because everyone said you can't class Britain first at the London Assemblies because, because London's been taken over and use that awful phrase, London's standing. Um, so Rochester and Strewd by-election 2014, Britain first put up a candidate a total of 56 votes. That's what would have happened to UKIP had Anne-Marie Waters taken over. And as much as I support what she's doing with Britain for, uh, for, for Britain, I don't think electorally it will do anything. I think, in fact, it will bomb at every election. It's going to take her at least 10 years to get anywhere because she's going to have to learn that at the polls, people are not going to vote for somebody that is a single issue. UKIP, when it was a single issue party, got nowhere. It wasn't until 2014 when we started banging on about the, the plurality of politics that we started getting votes. And, and for Britain, it's got a manifesto that covers everything, but it's, its members, its supporters only talk about one of those policies. Anne Marie Waters, yeah, I've seen her. She's done some really good um, uh, interviews. She did a one to one on Facebook, uh, a one to one, a a going live on Facebook, and it was great. You know, she she did talk about other issues, but predominantly it was talking about Islam. So when Full Britain gets to the polls, it is going to come last. When they get money into the party, which I'm sure eventually they will they'll realise that people just are not going to vote for that one single issue. And when your members, party leader and supporters only talk about that one issue, you are not going to get other people. People like me are never going to join a party that has that one single issue.